Alright, let me do a little tweak in here. Are we on? Yeah. You are. Let's show that. It's time for the Tracy Williams Show! Woohoo! Always have to say woohoo! Every time. Yeah, you lost your music. <laughs> that's, okay. that's okay, that's okay, I like that's it. That's okay. Alright, it's all you guys. Alright. Welcome everyone. It is 6 o'clock and it is the Tracy Williams Show live, as usual, on Wednesday night. Oh, look here, Tracy Williams is live. Okay, we're having a little technical difficulties because we're doing our camera work a little bit different than we normally do because of the setup of the room. And so we will get set up here. Is that better? There you go. Okay, right okay. here. All right. So uh, welcome, everyone. And tonight, I have hit the big time. <laughs> okay? We are simulcasting. I've never simulcasted before, but that's a big deal. And we are simulcasting here on KSHN Online Radio. And I have a very, very famous person here with me. I have a Hall of Famer. Did you guys know there is a Radio Hall of Fame? And I have uh, Mr. Bill Buchanan right here. Thank you. Who is a Hall of Famer. You're very kind. I tell you what, what's really cool about that is the Hall of Fame is located in Kilgore, Texas, which is where the... Uh, Radio, I'm sorry, Broadcast Museum is. Oh, okay. And it's all part of the same thing. It's just really a thrill to go up there and see all that stuff. And, well, I and remember when you uh, were nominated and then they put you in the Hall of Fame. That was a big deal here in Liberty, Texas. Yeah, yeah it was a very nice, a lot, a lot of very nice people said a lot, a lot of nice things. Most of them weren't true, but boy, oh boy, did they sound good. <laughs> it's great. You are great. And so, uh, first of all, I want to give condolences. Uh, you recently lost your wife, Jana. Yeah, quite a sh quite a shock. That is a shock. something you don't get over in time soon. No, no. Fifty-seven years and best buddy I ever had. Yeah, that is a lot of time, and we, are, I'm sure, the whole community misses her. Yeah. And I know he, everybody here at the radio station does. Yeah. Um, so I want to go back. <coughs> I asked people, "What do you want to know about Bill Buchanan?" And they wanted me to go back. Way, 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 way back. Way back. You got it. Way back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Bill Buchanan, where were you born? Indianapolis, Indiana. Okay, and then did you grow up there? Where did you grow up? Grew up in Richmond, Kentucky. Okay, so first of all, how did that happen? How did you My father worked for the federal government, and he got transferred around a lot. Okay. So it was almost like a military brat. We weren't in the military, but it was almost like, and it was during World War II, too, so uh, it was a pretty exciting time. Of course, I was too young to yeah. really know, but the point is he got chantred around a lot. We were in Indianapolis. We were in uh, Columbus, Indiana. We were in Twilla, Utah. We were in, we, and then where else were they? And finally, Dad said, I could get back towards Indianapolis again, yeah. and the only thing he could find was in Richmond, Kentucky, which was a real nice government installation there, and by the time the war was over, and uh, so we went there and spent the rest of my youth there, graduated from high school, attended college there, okay. all in Richmond, Kentucky. Okay, okay. So um, so you said your dad was uh, worked for the federal government. Right. What kind of job did he do? He was a wage and salary analyst, which you've never heard of before, but okay. all the all the, the uh, payroll standards mm -hmm. are all come out of the wage and salary analyst okay. department. And he, he and a guy from Rockford, Illinois, were the original two wage and salary analysts in the federal government. And they still use that same general standard okay. for arriving at salaries for people in different job categories. Okay. And then your mother, did, did she work or did she, was she a homemaker or what did she your was, mother do? She was uh, graduating college and tried to teach elementary school, but mm -hmm. when you keep moving, it's not easy to yeah. do that. I was in three schools in the first grade and three schools in the second. That's mm -hmm. my level of, of understanding of what I was going through during that time. Right. And, uh, but they were, she was trying to teach school, so she, and eventually did not. And she yeah. just gave it up and was a stay-at-home mom. You have brothers and sisters? Or? I had two brothers. Uh, my older brother John lives here in Texas, mm -hmm. and uh, and my younger brother Jerry who lived in California, and he passed away with kidney failure here two years ago. I guess maybe three now. Okay. All right. And then somehow you got. Well, let me let me back up after that. So you go to college. What was your degree in in college? Uh, you said degree, and I did I didn't say degree. Okay. Well, you went to college. What were you studying? What did you think you were? I thought I was life? in pre-law, and I was going. I was just absolutely certain that's what I was going to do. Had a real big inspiration and influence in my life that headed me in that direction. Who did? And who, who inspired you to do that? His name, an attorney in Kentucky by the name of Doug Chenault, okay. and he became a federal judge later oh, on. Wow. And that was much later on. Yeah. At any rate, he just he finally said something. I didn't exactly come from a family with a lot of resources, so mm -hmm. he said, if you'll get your bachelor's degree, I'll pay for your law school. Mm -hmm. 
and I never got the bachelor's degree. Okay. <laughs> so I'm still looking for that law That's degree. Okay, you have done very well for yourself. So yeah. not a problem. Okay, so you left college, and then what kind of job did you do after that? Uh, pretty quick broadcasting, but not not mm -hmm. entirely. I, I worked as a salesman in a yeah. great big hardware and appliance store in Richmond, and did some other things. At all. But pr as soon as I could, I also and I started in the media business as mm -hmm. uh, uh, writing for the newspaper oh, and okay. working the newspaper first in Indianapolis Times, and then a couple more yeah. local newspapers back in Kentucky. And, uh, and I, I just I was apparently in, in the habit of moving around a lot, so I did that for a while. Yeah. And if you're going to try to go anywhere in small market radio, you've got to be willing to move. Right. And so Jan and I got married. Kelly was born four months after we were my old, our oldest daughter. Mm -hmm. were, uh, born four months uh, after I got in broadcasting. So I always remember how long I've been broadcasting. If yeah. I, as long as I remember how old she is. And so your first job in broadcasting, what did you do? Richmond, Kentucky. It was in advertising sales. Advertising sales. Yeah. And then you're like, I can imagine you're, you're selling and then you're thinking, hmm, <laughs> I think it'd be more fun to be on the mic instead of selling? Small market, you got to be able to do them all. Okay. And that was what the goal was. Right. Not so much I wanted to move from one job to the other. Yeah. I wanted to learn how to do them all. Okay. And so I learned to do some announcing, and then I got in sports play-by-play. -play. Probably the most, I never talked about this hardly at all for no reason. Mm -hmm. I keep forgetting it. I've been out of yeah. it too long. But I did a program called The Man on the Street. And they did it every day during the noon hour for 15 minutes. And mm -hmm. you, it has the same location all the time. Right. And you would go on the air, and you'd pick people up out of the side, or come, well, coming down, yeah. out of the sidewalk? No, not hardly. <laughs> uh, uh, coming down the sidewalk and talk to them for a while. Yeah. And some of the things that happened were just hilarious. I bet. <laughs> I bet. Because it's live, just like this. I mean, yeah. uh, And they weren't expecting it either. Right. Now, after a while, and people knew I was there, then they started looking for me, and that the ones who wanted to get on the air started looking for me. But in the early beginning, they had no idea what this idiot's doing with <laughs> sticking this microphone <laughs> under my nose. And then, so what year around is that? 63. 63. Okay. And, uh, Correction, 64. I got married in 63. Okay. 60. So 64. And you said you did play-by-play. -play. Is that football? What kind of sports did you do? Well, I, I, done, I, I did a lot of basketball refereeing for extra money because there's okay. not too much of it in broadcasting. And, and, uh, and as a result, I started out in basketball play-by-play -play, and then did, did football. And then, of course, I did, I've done that down here for 41 years. Nobody else ever did the play-by-play -play for... Liberty Panther game, yeah. except me, until the wow. uh, season before last, when I decided, that's enough. That's enough. <laughs> and so yeah. Ross, uh, Ross Norwood now is doing that for us, along with Joe Roberts from the mm -hmm. school staff, the you know, soccer coach and all, and Joe, Joe's a great guy too, so is Ross. Okay, and so uh, where did you go next? Richmond, Kentucky, and went to Mount Sterling, Kentucky, which is really, I really learned broadcasting. I had some okay. kind of... Un the people I was working for in Richmond, I didn't feel like were really honest. Yeah. And But I went to Mount Sterling, Kentucky, and they were the greatest folks in the world. And whatever I know about radio that's good, I learned yeah. it there. And they owned another radio station, and um, they owned two more, one in Frankfort, Kentucky, mm -hmm. and one in Delaware, Ohio. And they sent me to Delaware, Ohio to be their sales manager up there. And that was my first promotion in broadcasting. And I went up there and did the same thing, did a lot of sports play-by-play -play and some other things. But I was sales manager and trying to pump up the station maybe do some more business. And they had promised me that they were going to buy another radio station and they would make me the manager. Actually, what they said was, we'll give the choice to our other managers first. Right. And if they don't want it, then you get it or you get what's left behind if they move. Right. So whatever, that was, that was the promise. And then the FCC came up with a rule and they did away with all new licenses for AMs. It didn't last for very many years, yeah. but they, they did away with it. And what happened was, all the stations available for sale, suddenly the price tag on them went through the roof because there were, you couldn't go out and put a new one on, right. so you got to buy an existing one. Right. And when, then the, when the prices went up, they said, we're not going to buy a station. Okay. And that's when I started looking and ended up finding an advertisement for a, a guy in the, to be a station manager in, in, the, in uh, Georgetown, Texas. And that was in 69. And I was, first of all, I was second choice. Okay. And uh, I was second choice. And the guy who got it, four more years than I had, lived in Austin. Was, uh, for all the reasons in the world, they hired him instead of me. It was 31 applicants, I remember oh, that. And, and so anyway, I got down the, uh, he stayed 10 days, and his wife didn't like Georgetown, and she says, we're moving. And there were some reasons for that I won't go into on the air, but that she didn't like Georgetown. Right. But at any rate, at any rate and uh, she, so uh, they called me back and said, well, you know, this has happened, are you interested? And I said, I was interested before, I guess I'm yeah. still interested. So I accepted the job and came down there in 1969, Valentine's Day. 
Wow. Maybe. So was Texas a big difference to you from the, from being in Kentucky or? I can't remember. I, yeah. All I know is I really liked it right from the yeah. get-go. I really, really liked the, uh, Georgetown from the beginning. It was a college town, Southwestern University. Right. We've got some students here in, in Liberty to go to uh, school mm -hmm. at Southwestern University now. And it was just a great community, very small town, college town, and had a lot of opportunities in it. And I, I was now a station manager and found out I wasn't a very good one for a while there. Uh -oh. and, well, the, learn, and, right? and the building's going down and Bill's sitting there clawing and yeah. <laughs> clawing, trying, I was scared to death the boss was going to throw me out the door. Right. And uh, so that, that didn't happen. We kind of turned around. Well, later on, one of my friends there who owned a great department store, one of my best advertisers, uh, told me why it happened. Said, they finally realized they probably won't go get rid of his damn Yankee, so we'll just keep him and be nice to him. <laughs> so how long were you in uh, Georgetown? Five years. Five years, and then where'd you go? I went to Lockhart, my first uh, ownership. Okay. I was a part owner yeah. of a station in Lockhart that had 20% uh, ownership with a couple guys who were in the newspaper business and wanted, wanted to see if they could make any money in, in radio. So I was there for three and a half years, but I really, really wanted to own the whole place, and they didn't want to sell it. And right. the deal always was, if, if anybody wants out, the other had first refusal on their on their share, right. and so when I found the, the situation at Liberty, mm -hmm. uh, I asked them out, and they were great, still great friends, They're just wonderful people. That I had the honor of being partners with there in, in Lockhart, and uh, so at any rate, I, I came to Liberty, and, and they got the whole station that way. And, and got, so, what year did you take uh, the station in Liberty? I came to Liberty in uh, with the old KPXE, and uh, I got here on January eighth. Uh, 1977. Oh. And uh, been a while. Yeah, it has been a while. 40, 42, 43 years and been here ever since. And in, incidentally, a lot of people don't, won't realize this, but in those days, uh, FM was nothing. Right. It was elevated music, and that's mm -hmm. what they even called it. Really? But I really thought that you could do something else with FM. I'd done it in Georgetown. I put an FM station on the Georgetown when I was there, and we turned it into a real entertaining small town radio station. And, and, and it w really did well. Yeah. And so I was convinced that I could make that happen here. The problem was there wasn't any frequencies here. And uh, uh, Houston had them all, and Beaumont had the rest. Okay, now wait a minute. So when you first came, it was AM? And AM only. Okay, and so. And it was a license only to be daytimer. Could not oh, broadcast really? at 6 o'clock at night. After 6 o'clock at night, you better get off the air, or you're in violation of FCC laws. So that's not a good thing. And so I, uh, I really, really wanted to get an FM because they were full time licenses. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and there was no, no frequencies available. And I did a lot of searching for them. No chance. So at any rate, there was a rule being proposed by the FCC. And I won't go into all the details, but what it boils down to is they were talking about changing the rules of what constituted interference. The reason there was no frequencies here is because they thought that because of their standards, you would have interference from other stations and, every, and everybody's st signal would be messed up. Right. Well, they were wrong. Mm -hmm. And the broadcasters talked them into it. And into changing the interference rules, and they were, and the broadcasters were absolutely right. Yeah. But what they did was that FCC had the had the uh, uh, had the idea, if you will. Right, they exactly. kept talking to them long enough till the FCC got the idea, and they, and so then when when they made that change, mm -hmm. that was in 1979 or something like that. Mm -hmm. What was it? We got on the air here with the FM in '91. No, it was later than that. So we do. And so they, somewhere in there, we got, they got the, uh, the law was passed. It's called the 80-90 rule, and that's only because that's mm -hmm. rule number it is in the book. Oh, okay. That changed the rule uh, of interference. So they, we, we, uh, when they did that, it opened up not a few, oh, but wow. thousands of frequencies all across the nation. Right. And I said I was going to be the first application in there. Well, I wasn't. I was third. <laughs> wow, that's Little Town and Liberty. Yeah. yeah. We were the third station to get their application clocked in, mm -hmm. stamped in by the FCC. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then we uh, it took a long time for the FCC to figure out how to grant these new licenses. Right. And uh, and, and once once it was four years eight months it took them to grant the license. And uh, and then when we went on the air, I, all I needed once I got what's called the construction permit. Yeah. It took me four months to get it on the air. All right. And uh, so uh, well, we've been on the air with that since ninety one. And have you done the party show, the party line, that whole? Party line starts in Georgetown. Oh, and okay. called that as well. Now, if you take just the Liberty, the Liberty Party yeah. rides, I've done over 12,000. Wow. But if you take the ones all back to Georgetown, I've done over 14,000. Wow. So um, for some of my Facebook people that are not from this area, he does a show in the mornings, uh, 
14,000 of them. Yeah. I mean, a little, and it's usually community people, it's right It's here. always at 8.30. It's always, I started, it, the program's already on in Georgetown. I didn't yeah. I didn't create it, somebody else did. Right. And I started doing it, and of course I would kind of massage it around and change it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I did it there, and then I did it in Lockhart, and then we came here and put it on here, and uh, and, and done it that entire time. So 14,000 overall, 12,000 in Liberty. And that's why he's a Hall of Famer. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's still trying to figure that out. You know, you're, you're good. And so, um, and the good thing about the party line and about this radio station is your involvement in the community. I mean, you go above and beyond. You are. You wouldn't know anything about that yourself, would you? Uh, no, but you're like, I'm like here, you're way <laughs> Oh, no, no, here, no. Way up here. I'm not even mildly surprised you're doing this program. Um, I think it's wonderful. Oh, thank you, thank you. I love it. It's so fun. So um, anytime anything is going on in Liberty, the first place to find your answers are usually the radio station. And you probably, like I think you guys have told us before, if there's some question anybody has, what do they do? They just call the radio station, right? Are you guys like a question and answer place? Well, well yes. the great thing is when they ask us a question, we don't know the answer, we go find it out, and now we're smarter. Right, and exactly. I've, had more, I've been led by listeners to do more good things mm -hmm. than anything I've ever thought about myself. Right. Um, tell us about a couple of the big stories that you guys covered like i know the big flood in 94 was a big deal with the radio i mean i i think aren't there videos of you in a canoe or something or a boat yeah, going a boat, down motorboat yeah going down main street yeah in the big flood yeah and that's before i got here so i actually watched that video because i had no i didn't know how yeah what happened then but. that was a, that was a big one and it hurt us all a lot and a lot of us lost houses during all that we were trying to cover the flood meanwhile my house had 32 inches of water in it and uh, wow. that, that was a uh, and that uh, poor old Jenna was fighting that battle by herself because I was no help. Right. <laughs> well, and the big thing Most here, of the time that was true. I was not any help. And the big thing here in our <clears> town <throat> is flooding. Uh, when I moved here 15 years ago, uh, Bill was one of the first people that I met. And you actually invited me to Rotary. And uh, one day I'm in my house, and it's raining like cats and dogs, and it's... It's in the middle of the night, and I hear this bang, 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 bang. Her and office was at a different location at yes, that point in time. Off, my office was on Main Street. He's like, Tracy, your <laughs> office is flooding. And I'm thinking, well, I can't do anything about it right now. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that's just the kind of guy he is. He goes up and above, and he wants to inform everyone and let everybody know what's going on. So uh, can you, are there, what about the, um, did you guys cover anything? Wasn't there an explosion or something down 563? Yeah, that was that was really something because uh, that was a worldwide story, and it was a great big underground water. Uh, I'm sorry, underground storage uh, of uh, of natural gas, mm -hmm. and they're still down there. Yeah, there was nothing wrong with the well. Mm -hmm. There was something wrong with the me mechanisms at the top of the well, man-made stuff mm -hmm. on top of the well that failed, and it let the gas start to leak, and then it ignited, and then the rest, as they say, is is history. But it was a terrible, terrible fire. But the people said those daggone wells are no good. They, this happened out right. there. It had nothing to do with the wells. Right. It had everything to do with what, what man made on top of, on right. top of. Pardon, pardon my voice. I apologize no, for this. But, but at any rate, uh, that was that was a huge story too. It really yeah. was. And then there was a couple other uh, similar fires where uh, one person was killed and two or three people were injured uh, down Wattlesville Road. And uh, and then there was there was several pretty major what I call disasters here. Yeah. And I, I, if you, there was a, there was another story that was, mm -hmm. I guess just, I've had I've had the displeasure or pleasure of covering a lot of uh, stories over the last fifty six or fifty seven years I've been in broadcasting, and uh, probably one of the most difficult stories I ever covered was the, pro the discover was the uh, death of Price Daniel Jr. and that was in nineteen eighty one, mm -hmm. and it was it was it changed a lot of our lives around here because there was uh, so much to that so many sides of that coin, if you will, yeah. and it was it was a story that just so happened due to circumstances that uh, certainly had nothing to do with me being a good newsman, but the circumstances were that I was the third person at his house after the shooting. Two, so for two our medics. listeners, I've got listeners that are like all over Texas, yeah. so give a little bit about what happened. Well, uh, it was a it was a, a strange uh, by, uh, husband and wife, mm -hmm. and they got in a big argument, and they were in the process of getting a divorce. And they were putting together, I think they were making lists of what, who got what. Mm -hmm. And there was some real bitterness involved in that thing. And, and, uh, and a lot of argument, a lot of yelling and screaming and everything else, and a gun. Mm -hmm. And it's a lousy mix. Yes. 
And so Price was, and Price Jr. died. Mm. And he'd been Speaker of the House already. He had been a candidate for Attorney General, lost to Mark White in a close race, and they were mm -hmm. uh, law school buddies. Wow. And, and, but all that happened, and it was all a huge story that came down to two great big trials. One of them had to do with who was gonna get the children. Mm -hmm. That was the child custody case. And Vicki made, uh, Vicki uh, uh, Daniel, who was the wife who pulled the trigger, yes. uh, she made the agreement that she would tell the whole story about what happened on the night of January 19th, 1981, uh, if they would let her keep her children until the trial was over. Mm -hmm. And so they agreed to that. Yes. And so they said, we got her now because we'll get, that she'll have to, under oath, have to testify to everything that happened yes. on that night and we'll got it and we'll get her in the murder trial. And so that, that did not go well for the family of Price Daniel when he did. And let me tell you something, there's not a greater family in the world mm -hmm. than the Price Daniel family. And Price Daniel Sr., who's no longer living, was a great friend and a very kind man to me. And I never, never forgot that uh, because he was here as one of the most widely n recognizable politicians, except maybe John Connolly, mm -hmm. in the whole state of Texas wow. and the whole history of Texas, right. if you go back far enough. And, uh, but at any rate, it was a, it was a very, uh, difficult time for everybody and because she told the whole story and it wasn't the way the family perceived it mm -hmm. things started turning during the trial and there, and there was three possible verdicts that jur jury could come up with one was the family gets the uh, children and the, uh, the uh, judge would decide when the visitation for Vicki would occur mm -hmm. Vicki would get the children and the, and the um, uh, family would get the uh, some days, some periods of time that the judge would say they got the children, right. and the other was neither. And neither was the best because nothing changed. Right. And that was the verdict. Okay. So she maintained full control of the children and their, their lives and everything else and did not go, and then when she got to the, uh, they got to the murder trial, mm -hmm. it was, it, all this evidence was already there that they didn't really fully understand, they being the prosecution, didn't fully understand, and now, she, so she won it as well. And was well, not, she did. Yeah, okay. she was found not guilty, uh, uh, and uh, and she kept the children, and her life went on not very pleasantly. Mm -hmm. She had to, she really left the, the community because she wasn't made to feel very welcome, I think. But everybody really started changing their mind, and they realized there's a whole lot more to a story than what may appear on the surface. There is, and 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 the and the community, and I think the reason the community healed so fast was because of Price Senior. Mm -hmm. He just would not let let that be the way his family was identified. Right. And he was so great about it. What a great man he is. And the whole family is. And Miss Jean, his wife, was a wonderful person that I got a chance to know quite well. And she was so cotton big and kind during all this. And it was just, uh, I think that's what happened. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't allow the town to become any more bitter than they already wow. were about it. And uh, so that was probably the biggest story. Biggest of whether books written about it, there was movies done about right. it and everything else, and a lot of that uh, uh, kind of, some of it hurt the story, mm -hmm. and some of it helped the story. Right. Okay, and then we've also had all kinds of other disasters, like all the hurricanes that we've had. And yes, we have. <laughs> that is, I hope we don't get another Three one. Three major hurricanes. And yes. Lots of it was Arita and Ike and then Harvey. Harvey, and then we just had another flood. I know I paid the flood plane yeah. about a year ago. Yeah. Um, for Oak Forest. Get, get Isabel. Isabel. Isabel, there it is. Um, and so, what, it, what do you, what are we, are we, no, no, we're not. I'm, I'm okay. sorry. My watch was my, watch. my watch was riding on my wrist. I apologize. Okay, and so, um, how do you think the radio business has changed? Completely. All these, yeah, that was a question that somebody, <laughs> somebody actually phoned in to me. How does the radio business change? Uh, when I got into radio, everything was done on. Does ever do you all do you remember eight track carts? Yes, I do. Well, before eight track carts, broadcasting got those kind of track tapes, and we suddenly were able to do things without having to have an engineer. Mm -hmm. You used to have to have a, an announcer in the booth mm -hmm. and an engineer behind the control board running all the equipment, and everything was. Um, this was before transistors, right. and everything was tube tight, and it was blazing hot in those rooms, mm -hmm. blazing hot. Oh, and so, and so they. Uh, uh, but when they, along came transistors, mm -hmm. that reduced the heat, and along came cart machines mm -hmm. with the where you could put commercials on the carts. We big had a big. Well, that's been since you and I've been here, Tiffany. Uh, the, the big carousel with a whole bunch of carts stuck, and then you mm -hmm. find Tracy Williams State Farm, pull the cart out, slide it in the machine, push a button, and it ran. And when it was over with, you did the next thing. You played right. the next record. 
and record, everything was on records. Uh -huh. Nothing's on records now. Yeah. So the changes have been total, right. complete. FM was nothing. When I came here, there wasn't a single, in, 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 in Houston, there was not one single solitary FM station in the top 10 stations in Houston. And then maybe three years later, there was one. Yeah. And then three years after, that was seven. Right. And then there was nine, and that's pretty much the way it stayed since then. It's been nine. Nine of the top ten stations are the are, are FM, mm -hmm. and uh, and one is AM. But it's it, it's just amazing how this whole thing has occurred as all a part of the changes you're talking right. about when you ask that question about broadcasting. Well, Nothing's the same. And then you guys have changed here because you sold the station. Mm -hmm. Well, you sold. What did you sell? I sold the transmitter and the license, which is the station, the station. Just, just like you but said. But here we are still sitting in a station. But this is a building. This it's is not a building. Radio station. Right. But and so now we're you online. guys are on. Tell, tell us about the how you operate now. Come on, Tiff. Okay, I'm going to introduce uh, <laughs> a very good friend. Let me let me switch that. I will switch. Let me borrow this. Okay, you bet. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to get down. to the technical stuff here. Here's this. You're, you know, you have your little friend over here, and she is moving a camera in my direction, and I don't care for that because well, I'm, used to having, used I'm used to having. I'm used. I know it, and I'm going. All of a sudden, I don't have control. Of this, what? This is not something I care piece for. Piece okay, piece look. Piece. There we go. Okay, so this is the lovely, the talented, very talented, very very talented. Tip okay, hold talented. it. If we're gonna, gonna, let me get this on here. Okay. okay. <coughs> there I am. Okay. There, there she is. There I am. And uh, I first met Tiffany. When no, whatever it was I did, let me apologize okay. in advance. <laughs> I come here to the radio station as a very nice rotary volunteer. Yep. And we would do rotary radio days. Mm -hmm. And that's where I first got the taste of this. And was like, oh, God, I love this. Okay. <laughs> and so I would sit right there. Uh huh. And Tiffany would be right behind me. And she would yell at me the whole time. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't yell, I encouraged loudly. <laughs> no, but she yelled at me with love. And yeah. uh, if you mess up, if you push the wrong button, Casey, what'd you do? We had Bill's gonna kill you. <laughs> That's what I heard all the time. Bill's gonna kill you. Because if I didn't first. <laughs> this bad because you didn't push the right mic and somebody wasn't talking, somebody couldn't hear them. Right, yeah. Do you remember those days? Oh, yeah. But now, after I think of, after the first year, then uh, when Marianne, or not Marianne did the chamber later, but Whoever was setting it up, I was on the phone with them going, okay, look, I don't care what else you do, but Tracy starts the day. And there's a reason for that is because two years in a row, these computers, two years in a row, these computers cratered. Six o'clock in the morning, I have a building full of rank amateurs. I mean, folks, that don't know what they're doing. this is bad. And all of a sudden, the one thing that can give us 30 seconds of breathing room, the computers crashed. Right. And the only thing I could do was, Tracy, push these buttons and talk. Right. And that's exactly what she did while I tried to run back here and fix the computers so we could have something on the air. But Tracy did it. She pushed the buttons and she kept them. It, it may not have been as smooth, but it worked. We and it we on. got it on. And so I was a I very happy. Mention, I got to mention something. That, uh, and that is, you asked me what was, what was different. That's okay. Uh, what was different about radio and what's different about radio was there wasn't a computer within 100 miles of a radio station. Mm -mm. And now it's all computers. Yeah. But that's probably the biggest single change, and I didn't even mention that. Right. What, but now KSHN, when we went computer, we went computer in 1994. That's when the process started. We may not have switched to it, but that's mm -hmm. when the process started. And we were, there was one station in Houston that had gone computer when we when it. we did it really absolutely it. so bill saw something coming down the pike and i was stupid enough to believe that i could be of help and i haven't been able to get away since <laughs> so how did you okay let's go now we're going to go back on oh Tiffany, now then uh, 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 okay so tiffany where did you where did you grow up i grew up outside chicago chicago you got all these northern people what's yankees the, the yeah <laughs> okay so uh how did you end up here I came, t I, we had property in Illinois, we had property in Tennessee, just kind of got tired of Houston, and I spent about four days in Houston, and while I'm in Houston, which is a huge city, 
I see about six horseback riders going up the middle of the median at I-10. And I'm thinking, yeah, that's just about crazy enough. I like that. Yeah. I'll, I'll, and then also they had a really bad flood event, maybe not like a 94, but it was bad enough in Houston that, um, that on the news before I went back home after my visit to Texas, they were, uh, actually there was a boat going up I-10. And I said, okay, let's see, we have people riding horses mm -hmm. in the middle of a major metropolitan area, and now they're boating on the freeway. These people are just crazy enough I can fit in. Right. And, and that's, that's you came here. yeah, that's what I did. I came to Texas. How did you end up here in Liberty, Texas? I was horsing around. I'm a huge Neil Diamond fan. Ooh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And somebody told me, Liz Williams, uh, somebody told me, well, there's a station here locally that plays a lot of Neil Diamond. So I find them on the dial, 99.9, .9, and say, okay, yeah, they kind of do. Oh, so I came over here, and I said, well, you know, what? let's go see what's going on over there. And so I came over here, and I walked in the door, and I met with JR, and JR says, man, we just hired somebody for Saturday night. He said, bring me a tape, so I brought him a tape. You had already been in radio. Uh, oh, yeah, since I was 14. You didn't go back far enough. I did not go back. You did not go back far okay, enough. Okay, let me, let me go back. Sorry. Okay. Okay, so you're 14. I was 14. And how did you get on radio then? We had a radio station with, I went to private schools. I did not go to public schools. And we had okay. a radio station as part of the private schools. Mm -hmm. And so far, I, the reason I can't quit here now and I have to stay with Bill forever uh -huh. is because every radio station I've ever walked into, I've got a job within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And if I leave Bill, I'm afraid I'm going to blow my record. <laughs> I'm afraid if I went somewhere else, they go, yeah, no. No, I don't know. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. And so did you do like him and, and go to different, a lot of different stations and then end up here? I did. I wandered around for a while. I got out of radio for a long time, mm -hmm. um, did other things. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I, it's, the one thing I know how to do is talk. Mm -hmm. That's the yes, only thing did. I know how to do. Yeah. So uh, that's how I ended up here. Anyway, so as we were saying, this is Bill Buchanan's last interview anywhere <laughs> on the face of the earth. How do you say that? Because he <laughs> he's mean. He's mean. Anyway, so I walked in, and uh, that day I dropped off the tape for, for J.R. and Bill. The guy that they'd hired for Saturday night had worked one Saturday night, freaked out, decided he absolutely could not do this. It was too scary. And they called me, and then I kind of like a leech. They haven't been able to get rid of me. Well, yeah. yeah. Right. You just can't get rid of me now. Well, we are glad you're here. Really? Yes. Oh, I've got to talk to you about that. I tell everybody, she uh, sounds uh, fierce. She is fierce. But inside, she's got a, a nice, soft ring. I wish you wouldn't tell people that, because it's really hard for me to intimidate them if I they know. decide I'm nice. I know. They don't know that you are nice inside. Well, now they do. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, and you have a son. I do. And how old is he? 16. 16. Yes. How's that going? He's 16. Any more questions? Yeah, yeah. And a good thing that you guys may have not known about Tiffany is she's a world traveler. So the last I like years, to go. I do like to you go. Have gone. Tell us about some of your trips. Well, first let me tell you why. Okay. Everybody says, oh, man, I'm going to do that later. I'm going to do that later. Mm -hmm. Right? Everybody says it. We're all going to go later. Okay. We're yeah. going go to go visit these places. And then one day I got a trip out of Liberty on a helicopter. And oh, the, yeah. The, yeah. I didn't want that one. Yeah, I didn't yeah. want that trip. And I got to, they flew me down to Herman Hospital, mm -hmm. and the doctor said, you know what, if you'd have gone home and laid down like you wanted to, that's where they'd have found your body. Wow. I had a heart attack. Um, in fact, I think Bill put on the radio the next day, she had a little heart attack. Well, it wasn't little. Mm -hmm. um, but that, I, as I started getting better, and it took a long time for those women out there that have had a heart attack or men, mm -hmm. It's not overnight. It takes a while. But I got my strength back, and as I started getting my strength back, it kept occurring to me, I almost didn't have a later. That's right. I almost didn't have it. That is exactly right. And I always looked at foreign travel as if it was something that was too expensive. And then I started digging around and said, no, if you're willing to make a few concessions, mm -hmm. it's not bad. Right. So we booked our first international trip. We got our passports, and we went to Costa Rica, and we haven't stopped since. And the boy and I like to go. It's what we do. We go. We've been to Costa Rica, uh, been to San Juan, San, is it San Juan or San Jose? Somebody help me here. Puerto Rico. No. no. Okay. Which one's Puerto Rico? San Juan. San Juan's San Jose in, in Costa Rica. Right. Okay. 
So San Jose, Costa Rica, we went down to the beach. We've been whale watching, um, spent a weekend in a tree house down there with howler monkeys climbing across the roof. Uh, we went to uh, Beijing. Uh, I took my 14-year-old son. If you don't want to travel, think about this. I, my 14-year-old can always look back, my 16, but a 14 yeah. at the time can look back now and go, I have stood on the Great Wall of China. Yes. Yeah, tell them about that. We went to China. China does not want me to come back, uh -oh. um, but uh -oh. that's okay. But we did. We ended up uh, going on the Great Wall of China, and you think about that's these amazing. things. It, it's it's absolutely amazing. Here's this little kid from nowhere, mm -hmm. Illinois, right. and you know we were on the Great Wall of China. Yeah, that. You know, and so and um, if, if you take teenagers, if people out there they take their teenager and their teenager goes, yeah, whatever. That's the way mine reacted. Yeah, whatever. About six months later, he's sitting, we're eating something, watching something stupid on TV, and he stops and he looks at me and says, Mom? And I said, what? He said, I've been on the Great Wall of China. Yes. It hit him. And so I, from then on, I decided, okay, it's worth it. Because even if he does do the whole teenage me, they, really they get like it. it. Yes. Eventually they get it. So we've been to Hong Kong. Loved Hong Kong. Everybody should go. Well, they should have gone to Hong Kong. I'm not sure. Well, I don't know what we can do. That was that's sad for us to watch that yeah. because we just fell in love with Hong Kong. Right. The people, the city, the people are wonderful. Um, mm -hmm. We've been to Thailand, Bangkok, Thailand. We uh, we got to give elephants a bath Ooh, cool. in Bangkok, Thailand. Um, we originally went when we decided. I knew I wanted to see the elephants, uh, and then we started reading about the elephant tourism trade not something I wanted to be right. involved with. Right. Um, and so what we did is end up going to an elephant sanctuary where they've rescued the animals out of the tourist trade. Mm -hmm. And you get to give them baths. And, and they're Asian elephants. And so they're the little elephants. But they're still big. <laughs> still huge. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then uh, we were due to go to Tokyo this year. We had planes booked. Yeah. And uh, then the... To, go, to get to Tokyo, we routed through Beijing because it's a lot cheaper. Um, so that was canceled. Okay, fine. I ponied up some more cash. We're going to go direct. Okay, that's fine. Then they canceled that flight. So now we're not going to go to Tokyo. And in about, how long did it take me, Bill? About 12 hours? I was going to say the same day. Wasn't yeah, it? it was the same day. They canceled my our trip to Tokyo that morning. By that afternoon, I had rerouted us to, um, uh, uh, to, to Athens, Greece. And so this year, well, you know, two or three years ago, we walked on the Great Wall of China. This year, we stood in the Parthenon. Wow. The Parthenon. Wow. The, on the Acropolis. So and so. It's not a shopping mall. It's no. not a shopping mall. No, and I'm sure it was beautiful. And it, the water is beautiful It's, there. it's, it's an amazing. And so the thing, I, the thing I try to tell people is don't wait till later. Mm -hmm. I came that close to not having one. Well, and I can say the same thing. Yes, you can. Yes, ma'am, you can. You came that close to not having one. And my girls over here, uh, Grace and Kaylee, they can tell you they have seen a big change in me. I've noticed on you, you post pictures of going places. You right. you go, you do. We do what we want to do. Now. That's right. And I don't... And that, that doesn't mean that we're not responsible. I'm right. still at work. We're still doing what we're supposed to yes. do to take care of our families and our futures. But and if you're looking at it and you're going, oh, well, I can't afford that. Okay, my trip to uh, the Asian countries, we, yeah. we go through Beijing because if you're willing to accept a long layover in the Beijing airport, mm -hmm. you can go dang near anywhere in Asia for 600 bucks round wow. trip. That's what all three of our trips cost wow. into Asia. That's so, yeah, I mean, I, I say the same thing. You need to do what you need to do. Yeah. Have fun. And that's why I'm doing this kind of thing. Yes. Other things. You just got to do it. Yeah. Um, and I'm having the time of my life now. It's great. I think that's why Bill and I kind of stuck with this thing that we're doing. Mm -hmm. And, and I, we're starting to get ourselves defined. It's only taken us a year. Yeah. Uh, but, at, you know, he's when, he's when we talked about it, he was selling and all this stuff, well, what am I going to do? And I came in and I sat down and I said, Bill, this is all I know to do. All I know is radio. Right. Between Bill and I, we've got almost 100 years of radio. Mm -hmm. Because I started so young and he started so old. Um, but, 
but that's why we kind of stuck no. with it is because this is what we do. Yeah. This is what we do. It's what you enjoy doing. You like it. You I do. And yes, it gets exhausting, especially mm -hmm. right now when we're still working our way through it. Um, but I'm starting to find the niche that I was looking for. Right. We're not a 50,000 watt FM anymore, so what's right. our niche? And I'm right. starting to find it. And so tell people how they can find you. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook Live. I do. What we did was originally I did not want to go to Facebook. I gave up. Yeah. I finally said join them. Um, yeah, and so do. what we do and what we're trying to do is we Facebook Live the Party Line programs which I've kind of renamed uh, into Radio Vision. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason I call it Radio Vision is because we really are starting to move into a lot of video. Um, but what we have is three businesses here. Mm -hmm. I have an audio I have a uh, print media, for lack of a better word, in the website, yeah. and then we have the video. It's three different things, all de hopefully designed to work together. Right. If you don't get to watch a video on a news report, that's okay. There's going to be an audio version of it coming up during our newscast. Yeah. If you don't get to hear it on the newscast, maybe you can go click on KSHN.com mm -hmm. and find the text version of it and read about it. Right. So there's three different ways and that's what I think is really turning out to be fun. Yeah. We, we can work. do something that nobody else can do. Yeah. We have three different ways of getting people information that they've always counted on us for. If there's a big thunderstorm, um, if there's, God forbid, yeah. a hurricane or right. some other kind of disaster, we're still here and we can still do what out. we do and that is help the people of Liberty County and now all over the world. That's right. So KSHN.com, we have a Facebook page, we have a YouTube mm -hmm. channel. Um, there's just a dozen different ways. If you want to listen, you can download an app called Simple Radio. Mm -hmm. If you want to watch, you can pick up already aired programs on KSHN News on YouTube. If you want to watch it live, like us on Facebook because that will then tell you when something's coming up live and we do a lot of breaking news alerts on Facebook. Um, if you want to read something that we've written, go to KSHN.com. We have, you know, you want to find out who's what, maybe it's an advertiser, you can go to our website, click on their link, it'll take you to their page. You don't have to go look them up because just go to KSHN.com, they're there. Click on their link, go see what they're doing. Exactly. So, three. Well, I've used all of that. To and this is why I love you. <laughs> I mean, oh, I, oh, I forgot to add. Community events. Our bulletin board are, are oh, yeah. well, we used to call it a bulletin board. Then we started calling it a community calendar. Whatever it is, it's nonprofit, mm -hmm. organizations, groups, churches, whatever. And they send us information and we put it on the air through the audio. Well, now I have a page on KSHN.com that's dedicated to those events. Which is even better than what you had before. Right. So now you've got two ways of getting your information out to people and I'm doing a huge sales pitch and I need to quit. <laughs> <laughs> but if you go to KSHN.com there's a whole bar across the top and you can hit those little links and I would encourage you to do that because yeah. we've got some other big stuff coming. Cool. Good. Well, both of you know that I love and I am so happy that y'all are still doing what you're doing. It w broke my heart when I first heard you sold the station. I'm like, oh my God. My first thought, this selfish First thought me. was Joe, right? <laughs> you know, the first thing was selfish to me, but I was like, that means I'll never be on the radio again. You know, it was so sad. So you, did, um, you created your own. So I did. I created my own, and here we are. Okay, now Bill. Uh, oh, let me get the mic back to Bill. Here, Bill gets his mic back. Say goodbye. This is a low... Oh, you got it, you got it. Low budget here, right? Um, so, Bill, what advice do you have for me being a, uh, an interviewer? You've interviewed hmm. 14,000 programs. Uh, programs. Uh, there's the thing that I wanted to mention a while ago, and I didn't, and I was ashamed of myself, and thank you for asking that question, because yeah. that took me right back to it. And that is that, uh, that, that the thing I enjoy most about broadcasting mm -hmm. is doing interviews. Right. And if you, you're talking to somebody, you're getting an interview with somebody who's probably 
in most cases, will be inexperienced. Right. If you just keep talking to them and take it from the most simple level in the world and, to, and let, get them to forget that microphone's there. Exactly. And just look at you right. and talk to them about the answers to the questions. Mm -hmm. And, and if, you're always going to have a question to ask them. You're brilliant at that kind of stuff. And, and so you, now we know you can get the, you know the questions mm -hmm. asked. Just ask them that question and let them talk. And once they get to rolling and they re start feeling a little bit good about themselves and the right. fact that that's this kind of fun, they bad? forget the mic's there. Exactly. And when they forget the mic's there, you got them. Then we They're going to do just fine. Okay, They're good. They're going to be just fine. Uh, that may be oversimplified, no, but it's. Uh, but they, I promise you, the minute they finally forget that the microphone's there, they'll start having fun with the interview and the questions you're mm -hmm. asking. Well, and um, one of my producers, Kaylee, she a lot of times will just take my notes away from me because we can just talk. Yeah. Then. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You don't well need said. it, and then I'll say at the very well end, said. okay, what did I miss? You know. Um, I did miss one question that somebody asked. They wanted to know something about horses. Were you into horses or something? <laughs> oh, that's going way back. Okay, tell me well, about that. she was too. I she wanna, was in horses. Oh yeah, too. Oh, we didn't know that. each other until we came to this radio station. We found out we had a lot in common, including some uh, uh, We're actually related back a thousand generations. Yeah, it's Probably. at least a thousand. <laughs> And that, that her name is one of her distant relatives' name is Campbell. My grandmother was Campbell. Wow. And then not only that, we found out that they were actually connected. Wow. Anyway, what was the question, ma'am? Uh, <laughs> horses. Horses. I did a lot of stuff with horses mm -hmm. when I was a young kid. Mm -hmm. And I and since I, my back's bad and my knees are bad and everything else, I don't do any of these things anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I rode I rode uh, uh, show horses, gated show horses. Mm -hmm. I rode western horses. And then the, the fun that thing I had the most fun at was riding. Hunters and, uh, and and going going mm -hmm. over hunting courses and oh, stuff wow. like that, like, leaping fences and th that kind of stuff. Like that stuff we fell <laughs> over yeah, the fence. Like that stuff, yeah. Like the real dangerous stuff when people yeah. fall down and get hurt. Well, that something. was yeah. Matter of fact, one a guy got hurt. When one, the only hunt I ever actually did, yeah. I did a whole lot of run up to the hunts, but right. I only did one actual hunt. Yeah. And that guy got hurt on that, not badly, but he got hurt on that one. So, but it's funny you bring that up. Sorry. <laughs> That's quite I saw a show about it. Sorry. But it really, I really thoroughly enjoyed horses, and uh, it was a great part of my real young mm -hmm. life. And I wouldn't have traded it for anything in the world. But she's got she's got a barrel racing career and stuff really? like that. He shut off. I didn't know that either. <laughs> she, it it wasn't so much a career. I ran regional rodeo. Okay. Regional. Still, it, I mean, it never was very big. Uh, I had a very mean horse who was very very fast, but she wasn't quite fast enough. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But you had fun. I did. And you did? Did you get hurt? Did you ever have a fall off or? Have a problem or? Give me that thing. Give me that thing. <laughs> okay, we got another story. All right, ready? No, I'm going to say it right now. I've never been bucked off a horse. Wow. I've had a bunch of saddles break and be turned upside down on them, but I've never been bucked off a horse. And I don't get on them anymore to maintain my record. So it's the same thing with radio. It just once you hit that record, leave it alone. Yeah. <laughs> Being raised in Kentucky, I had uh, I ran, ran a lot of race horses too. Yeah. Because it's kind of oh, sort of famous. Yeah, Kentucky. Keen, Keeneland and, and Churchill Downs and yes. stuff like that. And I had a chance to exercise a lot of horses. Now that sounds pretty exciting, but it's real important to know there's a rule, a law, mm -hmm. that says you if you if you're going to ride horses at breakneck speed and try to get good times out of them in training, then you have to have a license. Oh. If you just want to, if you just exercise them mm -hmm. and a lot of horses just need a good jogging right. slow workout uh, then you don't have to have a license and that okay. was me I, I never had the license but I uh, the, the, I do a lap around the track you know mm -hmm. I came in a couple times several no not a couple times several times yeah and uh, I came back around there again and that boss would say Buchanan that was an awful fast lap uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> when you get on the backside especially before dawn yeah. you get yeah. on the backside and you start kind of kicking them up just a little bit not a lot just a little bit how scary is that to go oh, to take a... Once you got used to it, it's really... It's, it's not that... Well, it looks scary to me. But I wasn't riding fast, seriously. Okay. I was riding fast when I was supposed to, baby. Right. But I wasn't riding fast. I was just riding for the pure joy of the speed. Yeah. It's amazing, that, yeah. yeah. You it's just, one of them loose. It's, it's flying, huh? You're flying. And then wow. gated horses and, and, and that kind of thing. I never rode the... I never rode in any kind of competition uh, quarter horses, mm -hmm. but I did ride them. Uh, I did ride them to exercise. That was the thing. I, again, I, I did not have a very good uh, income, if you will. Right. And so I went over and did any. I'd do anything for fifty cents an hour. Yeah. And fifty cents an hour will get you a chance to exercise some horses that be really belong to some really wealthy people, mm -hmm. but they just don't. They're busy and they just haven't got enough right. time to work them. That's the way it was with the hunters. Mm -hmm. and these were all be horses belonged to really wealthy people mm -hmm. who did who were not working those horses enough. 
Right. So they needed people like you to, to do that for them. Uh, yeah, and, and, and I did. But with every day off I had, I was going out to what called Iroquois Hunt Center. So how old were you when you were doing that? Pretty close to being married, so oh, close okay. to 20, 21. Okay. But that was a joy, pure, unadorated joy. I could not have, I had more fun doing that than anything else I'd done all my life with horses, wow. uh, riding those hunters, and, yeah. and working them in the exercise ring is what I did the most. Mm -hmm. but I went out on out across the country mm -hmm. there in Kentucky, near Lexington, as a matter of fact, yeah. and thoroughly enjoyed all that. Okay, I'll ask you each one other question. What are, what's your bucket list? What do you still want to do? Well, my problem with all that is my yeah. bucket list I left me about two months ago. Oh, I know. That's, <clears throat> that's that was all by a, right. accident. It was a terrible, terrible yeah. accident that happened to Jana, and she, and she was killed. Right. And uh, but all the things that we talked about doing, mm -hmm. when I finally got things settled down here, we didn't have to be helping here at the radio station yeah. and all that, or convincing myself that I was needed. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I don't, not really needed, but uh, uh, we were going to try to do some things. Right. And now that's all gone. And, uh, and so that's 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 the bad part of that. But everybody right. has a bucket list. Everybody does. Yeah, and I'd like to sometimes see a little bit more of the country or maybe mm -hmm. go back in some of the areas that I used to live in and see what right. it was like now, things yeah. like that. Real, real. I, I, see, when Jenna and I took some really great trips because mm -hmm. I've been to five world conventions for Rotary. Right, you're a big Rotarian yeah. here. Okay. I, I love Rotary. I don't big, Rotary. I'm not a big Rotarian, but I love Rotary. Yes. And I had a chance to be some great places in the world that I never would have gone to had it not been for Rotary. Right. And and so I've been to those five. So that was that was a lot of fun. Yes. And we were talking, not real hard and fast, yeah. like we're going to do it tomorrow, right. uh, about doing some other uh, world trips mm -hmm. and, and trying to have some more fun like we did on those. And that's not going to happen now. Yeah, well, something else will happen. You so. know, some sunshine will come. It will. And then, Tiffany, what about you? What's My, in store for you? I've decided I'm going to go everywhere. I'm going to do everything, and then I'm going to die. Okay. There you go. <laughs> then, after you've done all that. Every, I'm going to go everywhere, and I'm going to do everything. Okay. Well, good. Well, I think that's a great way to end. I, I think, couldn't agree uh, more. It has been great. Thank you so much for letting me come and do the Tracy Williams show here on the party line show too i guess or yeah. something but uh, <laughs> we don't know what it we is, don't know what this we, is but we're having a good time thoroughly enjoyed having you thank it you was absolutely fabulous but i knew it would be i told her when she asked me to do it said you'd want me to do it i wanted her and i to do it that i that's going to be fun it is fun and we all learned a lot more about you guys so that's the whole point of this show very good so thank you very much and bye come back next week